Hello and welcome to this video. We are going to be looking at the map function in Google Sheets. Now the map function is a really useful function that essentially transforms arrays. It looks at each element in an array or a list, performs an operation on each of those elements and turns it into something new. And it's a really powerful way of working with arrays. So I've got lots of examples in this lesson. So let's dive in. So I have uh, an array of data here in my sheets, a very simple three by three array of data. And we're going to just do a very simple transformation on that array and create uh, an output array over here. Now, one of the key things to remember about the map is that you give it an input array. It could be a range like this. It could be a single column like that. It could be a row. But whatever the size of that input array, you're going to get back the same size output array. It's not changing the dimensions there. It's going to stick with those dimensions. And it, what it's doing, remember, is each element in this array, it's applying this anonymous function that we call a lambda function. It's applying that function to each element of this array, putting them back into a new array of that same size in the same position, and then gives you that output. So let's see, let's see this example. So we'll say map, we'll go and highlight our array, comma. Now we're not going to have a second array in this example, we'll see that next. So we go straight to the Lambda and the Lambda is this anonymous function. And what it does is operate on each element of the array, each item in this array. So we'll say element and what I'll do is I'll shorten that it's just so I don't have to keep typing it out to just EL and use that as my placeholder. So for the first iteration, it's going to be one, it loops around two to three, etc. So we'll say L, L multiplied by two. And there's the function that I'm, the function expression, the formula expression. So we'll take each element and multiply it by two. Close this off, hit enter. And there we go, you can see there's the output array spilled across three rows, three columns, and each element, there's the nine becomes 18, each element multiplied by two. Now, like any array formula, it needs space to expand. So if I had tried to then come back and type over the top of this, it will give me that error here saying there's not enough space to expand the formula. So we need to make sure it has the space to um, fully expand. And then if I go back and change values in here, it will just automatically update, of course, in the output array. All right, so that's a very simple map example. Let's see a couple more notes just about map. So let's suppose I have one, two, three, and then I have another uh, array over here, A, B, C. So we'll say map, we'll highlight array one, we'll highlight array two, we'll say lambda. And this time I have L, but I also have an element from the second array. So what I'm going to do in this case is call them X and Y. So that's X coming from this first array, Y coming from the second array. And what I want to do is X and Y. I just want to concatenate them. So in fact, we could even use concat to just really make that explicit. I'm going to concatenate the two values. So let's see this in action. Let's see what happens here. Then we go 1a, 2b, 3c, which just put these two arrays together for me. And you'll notice that the output is the same size as this first input array. It doesn't make a three by two array. It still makes a three by one array. It's still the same size as that first array. So Whatever size your array is, the first one, it will output an array that matches that size, so the three by one in this case. Now, if I had this situation where I tried to do it like this, where the arrays were sort of, say, that shape, and we tried to do that, highlighted with this, lambda, x, and y, so the x coming from the numbers, the y from these letters, and I said concat x, why it will give me an error and it says 
the array arguments to the map are of different size. So whatever this first input array looks like, the second one has to match it. It can't be this row orientation. It can't be a big range like that. It has to be just this three by one if it's going to match this three by one. So that leading array, that array one uh, that you go for, that determines the size of any additional arrays you want to use plus the size of the output array. Okay, so that's how you work with two arrays or more. One other thing I'll show you quickly is we can also input. So we have these things called array literals and they look like that, or they can look like, if I put a semicolon like this, and they're really handy constructions for, for, for working with complex formulas. And we can use those just direct into our map. So let's suppose I have this one, for example. So I'm gonna copy that. It'll work direct into my map. So I'll say map. There's my array that I'm building, constructing inside the map here. Then we have lambda x, x times two. And it'll just operate on that array as if it existed in the cells over here, like it does an output for me, two, four, six. But it doesn't require me to have any of these input ones because it's already, uh, it has its data embedded directly in there. Quick note on the array literals. If you're in a country in Europe, then the syntax is slightly different on those array literal, literals. And you need to use a backslash instead of the comma to do the, the horizontal orientation. So I've got a link below this video for you to read more about that. All right, let's go to sheet three for another example. And let me just show you this formula, which I'm sure you're familiar with, the sequence formula. Let's do sequence 10. And let's think if I wanted to, I might want to make a list that looked like this, one of 10, two of 10, uh, three of 10, etc. And of course, you could use an array formula to do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's also a nice example of how we could do this with a map function. So let's see. So what I'll do is actually, let me move this across. We'll type the number 10 into here. And then instead of hard coding this formula, we'll reference that cell. So we'll delete that, and we'll go and click on this 10 here. So there we go. So now if I change it to five, it's gonna be five, eight, it's gonna be eight. So that'll work quite nicely. So what we'll do is we'll actually use this sequence as our data inside the map. So much like we did with the array literals just a moment ago, we'll use sequence here. So we'll copy that without the equals though, as the array for our data. So map, then sequence A3, because then that will expand. So it'll be five, 10, or a thousand, or, or however many values you want. So we'll just start with that. We'll say Lambda. And we'll do again elements and we'll just we'll just put element back we'll just print it out so that should just give me the one to eight no problem but in 10 gives me 10. so it hasn't done anything it, we, we've our formula expression here we've said is so remember this is the array one to ten or, or however many we specify just the numbers and then we're saying take that array of numbers and apply this function to each one and give me the new transformed array. So we haven't done anything. So we might, you know, we might have done this times two, like we saw before, and that multiplies them by two. But what we'll do in this case is we'll say L, and then we'll say ampersand of, and we'll just uh, build this up uh, and see what it looks like. So what we're doing is we're just concatenating those numbers there. So it'll say L, which will be the one or the two or the three or the four, depending on which iteration of the loop we're on. And then we'll add of, the word of to it. And then at the end, we'll just add this number, the actual final number, whatever that final number is. So we'll hit enter and there we go. And that's a nice way to build that uh, little list there. Now the array formula is also perfectly fine and, and shorter even, but it's a really nice illustration of, uh, you know, the sort of, how this map function works. So let's see another example of a sort of list building exercise. So I have this list and what I wanted to do was quickly convert them into this format. Day one, lambda, 
function like that, and day two map function, day three map uh, reduce function. Uh, but I didn't want to do that manually. So I said map will be perfect for that. So the first thing I needed was a one, a two, a three, or four for each day. And of course, that's generated by uh, the function we've just been seeing, which was sequence 10. So there we go. So we'll take that as my first array, and we'll take this as my second array into the map. So we'll say equals map sequence 10. Array 2 then will be this one. And then we'll say lambda. And we have the number from the first sequence. That's the end from here. And then we have, I'll call it uh, the value, which was you know the function. In fact, we'll call it f for the function. Um, fn for function. What the function name is from here. And what do I want to do? I want to then create a string. And in fact, you know what we'll do? We'll, we'll, we'll leave this here. It'll give me an uh, empty because I didn't reply anything. But we'll just show you quickly how we do this with the string. So day, and um, we would say ampersand, this, ampersand, and then that, and then ampersand, this, the ampersand function. And there we go, day one lambda functions. That's what I'm trying to do. So this is my function up here that I want to use inside my lambda. So often actually it's better to go ahead and create the um, this function first, where you just sort of figure it out with your uh, normal references. So we'll copy this one. We'll come back to our lambda here. And let me now uh, we'll move it over to the side. We come back to our lambda here. And here where we were up to, we then can put that in, except instead of day, I'm um, referring to that by a reference. We can change that to the n now, which references it from our map function n. And then over here, we can do fn. So remember, we've got the sequence 1 to 10. That's our first array, which is like, looks like this, but we're building it inside the map function. Our second array is the list of the names that I want. And then my anonymous lambda function says take n, which is the value of, so wherever you are in the loop, take the current value from the list 1 to 10. Then take the corresponding function name from that iteration. So when we're on loop 1, it's 1 and lambda, then 2 and map, then 3 and reduce, 4 and by row. So take those two values from the two arrays and then apply this function here, which is where you're going to concatenate them, join them together with some extra words that I've supplied. We'll close the lambda function, we'll close the uh, map function, and we'll hit enter. And there we go, it built me that list uh, very nicely for me. So that's a, a nice way, again, of building these more complex lists. All right, let's see another example. What I want to do in this one is look at classifying these values as small, medium, or large. Now, you could do this with uh, an if function and then an array formula, but again, it lends itself nicely to map. So we'll take a look at the regular function first, then convert it to a map. So we'll do this. We'll say if this is greater than a thousand, we want to call that a large. If this is greater than 500. So if it fails the large test, if it's not greater than a thousand, then we'll test it's greater than 500. We'll say it's medium. And then the final one, all we'll say is uh, we'll put the word true in, and then we'll say small. And, and this is a little trick here with the ifs function. We give it a test, we say large. If it fails that test, we give it another test, which is the medium. And then we want to have a sort of catch all at the end. And the way we do that is we just put true there because that's always true. It's always going to evaluate to true because it is true. Therefore, this one will just always then show whatever that last value is. We can't just uh, leave that out and have this small as a sort of final condition. We need to just put in a sort of dummy test, if you like that. So we'll use ifs. Uh, we'll just fill that down, and there we go. That would be what it looks like. But let's see it with map. 
So we'll say map. Uh, we'll do that. And then in fact, what we'll do is, of course, we'll copy, copy this. So we'll come back into map. Okay, so we've got the array, we can say lambda, um, and it's just the value. And then we'll put in our expression. And instead of referencing A4, of course, we're just going to put in the, the, the val here because that will just reference it each time we run through our, our array. It will just reference whatever that current value is. Finish off the map uh, and then hit enter. And there we go, that's a nice, again, another nice way of, of seeing the map function uh, and some of the things it can do. So it's just a way to just write these array formulas in a very elegant way. Okay, next example, let's see. This one's a little more complex. What we're gonna try and do is convert these into um, high and low Fahrenheit. So, We'll see how this goes. There's a few parts to this. So first of all, we need to strip out the degree C. Okay, so we'll say regex extract. We'll start, just do this one. And what we'll do is we'll say, just extract the numbers. So that's what the D, the backslash D means number, plus mean as many as you can find in there. Uh, so we've got the 14. Then we're going to say convert, uh, and it starts with, let's see, C and goes to F, converts it to 57.2 Fahrenheit, and then we'll add back the A uh, and F here at the end. And there we go. So that's our formula. Let me move that over to here. Now we'll use the map function to apply that to our entire set here. So we'll say map. Here's the array. So remember that's going to output an array in both columns. And we'll say lambda and we'll do T for temperature. Then I'll just close that off for now. We'll come into here and copy this. Come back to here and then just copy that in, and then that B4 we're going to change to the T, where the T was. Okay, we'll enter, and, and there we go. It's given me now the, the output of those temperatures in Fahrenheit for me. So now if we want to, we can also, uh, we can round this output. So we have here, this convert, so we could say round, and just make sure we close it off before we append the Fahrenheit symbol at the end there. And then that will just now, just to keep it consistent with, with these ones where we didn't have the decimal places. So, so there we go. So it's really a, it's an array. Then we're just taking each element in the array, which we're just referring to by this lowercase t. And then I'm applying this formula that we worked out to each value in the array. Great. Thanks very much for watching, folks. That was the map function in Google Sheets, super useful, well worth learning. And if you enjoyed that lesson, that video, then do check out the link below, which takes you to my full Lambda functions course that covers all of the different Lambda functions. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel so you can see future videos. And have a great rest of your day. Thanks, bye for now.